Well, thank you, David, for those wonderful introductions, including mine. Um, and uh, let's get started. So basically, let me introduce you to Jennifer Leslie. Jennifer Leslie was a dental office manager in a multi-office dental practice who embezzled over a half a million dollars in approximately three years. I was engaged to investigate and work with the regional police to put together a case and predominantly it was to capture the methodology used as well as the total amount embezzled. So let's talk about how Leslie did this. Well, she didn't have uh, the normal access, uh, what we see in most of our cases to the uh, accounts receivable or the patient transactions in the dental practice management software. Um, her, um, what, so what she did use was what she had access to. Um, and you'll find that with embezzlers, that they will often uh, find whatever means they can uh, to perform the activity that they need. So in her case, what she had access to was the accounts payable records. So this was a new case for me, one of the first ones I've done um, in the accounts payable side. So what she had um, actually uh, done is she had set up suppliers and vendors uh, in their accounting software um, with names that the dentist would recognize. So they were legitimate names of suppliers and vendors. Um, but in many cases, uh, the monies actually were directed into her personal bank account. Um, another thing she did was she was uh, in control of payroll and the bonus payment plans. And um, often she overpaid herself on uh, many occasions um, in this respect. So I had uh, documented just over a half a million dollars in the three year period. Okay, some of the warning signs and the symptoms that were identified. So the dentist um, was working as hard as ever and his practices were running smoothly and he just didn't see uh, the bank balance supporting uh, the work that was being done. And often that's, uh, that's the first clue um, for a dentist is that you know, there's not enough money in the bank and we're working hard, the chairs are full and we don't have any explanation for that. Another symptom that we, uh, the dentist identified was in the behaviors um, displayed by the suspect. So in her particular case, she had um, addictive and compulsive behaviors, uh, gambling being one of them. She was also living beyond her means, vacationing, uh, purchases, vehicles, um, all, all of that nature. So living beyond her mean, means is definitely uh, a, a flag for us. And um, one in particular with respect to her duties is that when she was away from the office, she resisted having anyone cover for her and that her duties were held over until she returned. So if she was sick or on vacation, she didn't want anybody covering her, her duties. So those were a few of the um, warning signs. Uh, definitely there were a lot more, but those were some of the ones that stood out in um, this particular case. Okay, some outside factors. So you would think with it being an accounts payable issue and, um, you know, with the payables and the accounting software that the accountants may have uh, been prone to see this um, issue, but in this case, they did not find the anomalies um, and, and not through any fault of their own. They were seeing the payables being made to vendors and suppliers that they too may have seen repeatedly over the, the months and the years, um, but they don't necessarily see where the money's going at the other end. So um, that uh, it was something that, you know, required uh, some extra identification. So in this particular case, um, the bank security department had uncovered the fraudulent activity. Um, they had reported it to the uh, dentist and then the police were involved. Now you would think, oh, everything should be good. Everybody should be able to do their job and, and carry on with this case. But actually, um, the police needed Prosperidence help. So we were engaged to help, and particularly we um, spent our time documenting uh, what was going on, the methodology that was used, as well as monetize, monetizing uh, the total losses. And this was all necessary for them to build their case. They couldn't do it on their own and they needed help doing that. So a lot of times, you know, even if it was the accountant who identified something or another, um, another party, 
uh, Prosper and it helps put that together in a nice package so that, you know, all the facts are gathered uh, coherently into a document with everything you need to proceed with the case. So the outcome in this particular case, um, the suspect was charged. She was sentenced to two years in prison and then she will serve a three-year probation thereafter. So just to uh, sum this up, uh, basically uh, what it comes down to is if you feel something is not right, trust your intuition. If your spidey senses go off, likely they're correct and something needs investigating. Um, you know, ha ha look into it deeper at your end. You could engage Prosperity to do a more thorough examination, but definitely if something feels off, don't ignore it. Likely, you know, something is going on. Um, another thing to uh, be cognizant of is behavior of your staff um, in the office. So a lot of suspicions are recognized from the behaviors of the staff. Um, if you're not sure what these behaviors or red flags would be, Prosperidant offers a embezzlement risk assessment questionnaire. You can request one of those. And when you complete that, um, it'll identify whether you have something to be concerned about or not. So, you know, if you're not familiar with the signs, we have a whole list of those and we can help you with that determination. Um, unfortunately, embezzlement happens and it can happen anywhere in your practice. It's not always going to happen in the front end of the office. It could happen in the back end of the office, as in this case. So um, what, what the takeaway is from this particular case is that if somebody wants to embezzle, uh, they will find a means to do it. So you need to be um, prudent, keep your eyes and ears open, your finger on the pulse, and, um, and that's about it. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Sonia, my question for you on this case was, were all of the outgoing stolen monies electronic or did she steal any paper payment vehicles like outgoing checks or anything? Or, or was it just exclusive transfers out of the doctor's account to her personal account? Great question, Scott. So in this particular case, um, most of the transactions were done through electronic means, through an electronic fund transfer uh, key fob provided by the bank, which the suspect had full access to as part of her job duties. But uh, that didn't mean she didn't cut checks and um, other methods for like payroll. She did do some payroll issues where she overpaid herself. So those in some cases were transfers. Sometimes the bonus checks were, uh, the bonuses were done in checks. So she did a little bit of both, but predominantly it was electronic fund transfer. Okay. 